I think it's working. I don't know. Let me try again. Okay, so I told you last quarter that we were going to start learning about what's called Rook Theory, and someone just texted me, so let me see what that means. Look, it's you! Can you see yourself? <laughs> okay, so, Rook Theory. Um, we're going to start out with some sort of board. Like that. That's a 4x4 four four board, in case you can't read. Um, it's kind of like a chessboard, except we're not dealing with like checkered stuff, like every other one is checkered. We're just dealing with some square grid. So that's the overall board. And our specific root boards are some subset of that, so some shading of that board. For example, we have that, where B is some subset of like ordered pairs, where that pair corresponds to that specific square. So like one one is that square. I know the camera is a little backwards, I think, but whatever. So the shading, the shaded part, is B. Once you have your board, basically, you can place what we call rooks on there. Um, and there are two different kinds of placements. So the first one is where we place the rooks in what's called a non-attacking placement. And think of attacking the way you would think of rooks in chess. So like you can't attack, so like if, if there are two rooks in the same row or the same column, they can attack each other. So we don't want that. So basically each rook, which I've represented with axes, is in its own row, in its own column. And that's called a non-attacking placement of rooks. We also have what's called a file placement. A file placement means that you can have them on the same row, but they have to all be in different columns. We also have what are called hit numbers, which basically means that if you have a a board, and we're talking about the whole board right now, not just the shape part. When you put, uh, let's say, three rooks on there. Um, and let's let's talk about the first hit number. So, if you have three rooks on the entire board, the first hit number basically means how many times does one rook hit the shaded part. Um, so we have some shading of the board and we only want one rook to hit it. So I, I'm doing a 3x3 three three board, for example. So here we have two examples. We have a 3x3 three three board, we're replacing three rooks. In this case, we only have two hits, because only two of them hit the shape part. Here we have one, and then if you look at all the possibilities of placing three, board, three rooks on this board, in a non-attacking placement, we have six total. And if you count them all, we have four different ways. One, two, three, four. Of placing three rooks so that two of them hit the shaded spot. We have two different ways of placing three rooks on the entire board where only one will hit the shaded spot. So that's the basic idea of a hit number. So in this case, the first hit number, there were two different boards, so the first hit number is 2. Uh, the second hit number is 4. So to summarize, so far we have a general chess board, an end by end chess board, is what we're working with. We have some subset of that, which we shade, is called our rook board. We can have a non-attacking placement of rooks, which means that they're not they're all in their individual rows and columns, or we can have a file placement, which means that they can be in the same row, but they all have to be in different columns. And then we have our hit number, which basically counts the number of times that a rook lands on a shaded square. So there are a bunch of different kinds of problems you can solve using the rook theory, but they're super complicated and it involves getting into stuff that would take me forever to explain to you. So that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that it was informative. Can't wait to see your video. Until next time.